Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in this new painting video. Today we're going to take a look at this light and airy painting of a sunny morning. I know it's been a while since I put out a new video. There was a Mother's Day and then I was sick for a week and then there is a commission painting. So even though I've been painting I haven't been painting for myself, so the past weekend I finally got a little bit of time free so I can do a painting for myself and also to make it a video for you guys. I have another commission painting coming up, but it's not super pressing, so I can take a little bit of pause and just paint for just myself and have some fun with it. I am still in process of making my Magello Mission Gold paint review video as well as a painting I've done completely with the Mission Go paint. That video is coming up, but in between, I am just going to put out this little video for you guys to enjoy. I actually really like this painting, and I also try to do things just a little bit different this time. So I'm going to talk about this. This photo I actually took during one of my lunch break very recently. And I said lunch break, but I actually want to make it more like a sunny morning. So I changed a few things around uh, the feeling of the lighting and things like that. For this painting, I'm trying to keep things as clean and simple as possible. So instead of trying to make a very high contrast painting, I want to make something that looks a little bit more light filled. However, for something simple, this painting is actually a bit more technical in terms of perspective. What I really like about the scene is mostly because that I hop in the background. The nice vibrant blue roof in the sunny day just look very delightful. Put that in front of the spring tree that filled with the warm vibrant green of baby leaves. I can honestly just paint that and it'll be a nice lovely little painting. But I want to add a little bit more depth, so I do include some cars and some figures on the right. But because of the house is such an important part of the painting, I need to make the perspective solid. So the two main things in this painting are the house and the red card. So these two things need to look solid. Other things can be a little bit loose because they are just there to support the main subjects. I want to stay as faithful to the source as possible, but I did make some changes. So I took out the awnings to the right because I want to keep the sky clear. And if I put the awning in, they will be competing with the house. So I take them out so you have brighter sky and also feels a little bit more open. And I also add some figures on the right just to make it more alive and as well as making the scale a little bit more relatable. Since I named this painting Morning Strolling, it doesn't make sense if there's nobody in it strolling. So I put some figures in. So the process of the drawing for me is mostly just get the feel of the form. And in the very beginning, I stay very, very loose and light. Just get the position and the scale of the things down. After I am quite sure where things are supposed to be and the size of them, I start to tighten up just a little bit, get a little bit more technical and draw the perspective and do everything as accurate as possible. After I'm done with the drawing, I start to erase some of the lighter lines just to make the drawing a little bit cleaner. I actually spend quite a bit of time doing drawing for this painting because I feel the simpler you want to paint this, the more accurate and the more solid the underdrawing needs to be. Because I cannot hide inaccuracy when I'm starting to paint. Now, I don't have to hand like measuring everything with a ruler and everything, but try to get the drawing as good as possible. This painting, I took a sponge and I soak it with water and I pretty much dampen all the papers because I want to try to paint the first wash with more a little bit more moisture on the paper so I can maybe work a little bit longer because I suspect that there will be quite a bit of wet on wet work for this first wash because of the light in this painting. 
So I decided to give it a try. I learned that actually from Andy Evenson's recent DVD, his painting video. He does that for almost all his paintings, so I'm giving it a try. It definitely gave me a little bit more time when it comes to working on the first wash. I can just take a little bit more time putting different colors and different edges and wet on wet work on it. So I start with the sky. I want to have the blue sky with some clouds, so I put some cobalt blue a little bit randomly here and there, and leaving some white. But I keep them mostly wet on wet, so the cloud will be very, very soft. And as I approach down to the horizon, I start to use some yellow and some greens to get that light of the background tree in. I want to keep them light because those glowing warm green is really, really nice. And that really speaks spring and morning in the Pacific Northwest here. So first wash is always about atmosphere and light. So we're not painting any detail. We're trying to leave a little bit of random highlights here and there. And I'm leaving the roof out because I want a clean blue roof. But other than that, it's mostly just colors and light. So don't think about detail too much and get stuck on um, painting everything super slow. Try to preserve as much light as you can. But if you slow down too much and the wash is drying, you are not going to have a nice clean first wash. And you might notice I switched my palette here and there because I am using both my Daniel Smith set along with my new set from Magello Mission Gold. So I am using mostly the saturated color from Mission, like the yellow and the blue in the sky and so on. But for the rest of the color, especially the earth tone, I am still using my Daniel Smith colors so I can try to get the best of the both world. In the future, I will probably get a palette with both brand of color on it so I can just do it without switching around. And now we're pretty much done with the first wash and notice the white that I left, the rooftop, the car hood and the top of the car, the figures and things like that, places that you want to preserve the light. And now the first wash is done, I am painting some of the value in the tree, but I want to keep them mostly light and I want them to feel they are just part of the background. So I pretty much pre-wet most of the tree area and then do some wet on wet work on it. That way I'm not going to have a lot of hard shapes and hard edges. I mainly just want to add a little bit more volume so it doesn't look flat, but I'm not planning to actually paint a lot of form in the tree. So this video versus the video that I shared with you last time was my paintings two years ago of downtown Vancouver. You can see that I changed quite a bit. In terms of tree, I don't paint a lot of form and detail anymore, especially when they are all part of the background like this. And now I'm painting the blue roof. I give it a little bit of gradation, so still from light to dark in the bottom, but they're still mostly just a single value with just a little bit of variation within it. And then I start to paint the car in the front. I was debating if I should use that bright red. I'm afraid that is going to be too distracting, but then later on I just give it a go and just see what's going to happen. I also switched to a smaller brush, a synthetic brush, and I slow down a little bit because I'm starting to paint smaller shapes. But that doesn't mean I start to dab a lot. I try to minimize my brush stroke as much as possible. When it comes to painting a loose painting, it's not really about just painting really fast. It's also about your understanding of visual language. How do you get to a certain shape? How do you get to describe a certain form with minimum amount of brushstroke and detail? That's the key.
to a loose painting, not by just painting really fast and not thinking about it. Actually, a lot of time you see artists think twice before they put down a single stroke. That's the key to doing a loose painting for me. Not by speed, but by thinking twice before you put down any brushstroke. If you just mindly start to dab your way through, the painting is not going to be loose. And it's not because you try to paint too much detail. It's because you're not trying to process the visual information that you see into a visual language. So for example, all the background cars and the truck that I am painting, they are expressed and they're interpreted by a few simple shape of light and dark. I'm not painting wheels, I'm not painting windshield and all that stuff. I am process them and try to just hint those details by painting some simple shapes. A lot of details in the background are what I call a perceived detail. You see those shapes and your mind just put it together. And because of the red car in the front, I paint a lot more detail on that and it's a little bit more descriptive on that. So the rest of the painting, when you see the shape that's kind of closely resemble what I paint in the front, your mind's starting to connect those visual language together. So if I paint a nicely rendered car in the front and the background, there are some simple shapes that's similar to that car your mind is going to read them as car also. I'm painting the shadows on the right and the foreground. Those are to offset and give it a little bit of the leading to our main subject, the car and the house. I'd also paint two figures that sort of have merged into the shadow area as well. Now you might think that, well, there's no owning where the shadow is coming from. No, it can come from the buildings off the frame on the right when the sun is hitting them at an angle. So since I'm painting a morning, the sun is not going to be directly high up. It's going to be a little bit at the angle. So that's what I'm trying to kind of express that the sun angle is a little bit different. So I'm adding a little bit more intensity to the red of the car and then start to just do a little bit of detail work. The light post, the windows on the house and just some details here and there. Just adding a little bit more blue to that fence there and just give it a little bit more hint and a little bit more details on the cars and the backgrounds. And the chimneys just giving it a form by giving it a shadow side. And give a cast shadow from the chimney on the roof. That cast shadow is quite important even though it's just a little part of the painting. And also some of the occlusion shadow from the roof to the wall. At this stage, every little thing should contribute to the story that you're trying to say. Every little detail should help the painting, either to make it look more solid, to describe the form a little bit more, to push the depths a little bit more. It should serve a purpose instead of just because you feel it needs to have more detail. Why does it need more detail? Does it actually help the story? Or are you going to put too much detail and actually start hurting the painting? This is the part that you need to make some decisions. Just putting some birds in the sky to just create a little bit more sense of space. Some more touches on the car. I use some white gouache to get some of the highlight back. And I also decided to paint a little bit of values behind the figures in the background so the figure doesn't pop out too much. So they actually kind of merge into the background a little bit. And now I feel the road is a little bit too light. So I do a very light glaze on top. So that I just give it a little bit of warm tint. And then we are finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this painting. I certainly enjoy painting this painting for you. If you like more of this video, please like and subscribe. 
Please also turn on the notification so when I have a new video, you will get notified. Also go to my website if you haven't to download my fast track watercolor PDF guide. Thank you and I will see you guys again very soon.